A few weeks ago, Peugeot released the 9X8 Le Mans hypercar. In this video, we're going to look a bit at the background to the aerodynamics of this car, and then what's going on with the airflow around it, followed up by a little bit of an investigation into how hard it actually is to make a racing car with no rear wing. Now this car was quite a controversial car when it launched because a lot of people saw it, they saw it with no rear wing on the back and they were a bit like, okay, well, well what's going on here? A race car has a rear wing. Uh, without a rear wing, they're gonna be really struggling for rear downforce levels on the car and it's not gonna be super competitive. However, obviously Peugeot has a, a reasonable amount of resource to put into this and they obviously thought that the design would be acceptable for their particular class. And let's have a look at why that's the case. The first thing we have to look at are the LMH or Le Mans hypercar rules. Now this is the new rule set that came in. Uh, it's a replacement for the older LMP1 category that was a, a bit less restricted in terms of performance, but more restricted in terms of geometrical constraints. What I mean by this is things like the diffusers and stuff like that were heavily regulated on what they could be. LMH is a very different formula to, to LMP1 from an aerodynamic sense. What it does is that it massively de-restricts the geometrical complexity of the regulations on the car. Geometrically, the designers are very free on what they can do around the car, what geometries they can choose to put around the car and how they can manipulate the airflow. However, it seeks to equalize the teams and make sure the performance is all a bit more even by actually specifying some aerodynamic targets for the car that the car can't exceed. So this means that you can only design up to a certain level of performance in terms of downforce and drag, and beyond that, your car will be illegal. So you can only develop to a certain point. And this is really a cornerstone as to why the 9X8 can exist in its wingless form. Now, the key things to note from these aerodynamic targets are that you have a maximum efficiency of four to one, so you can't exceed a lift to drag ratio of four to one for the whole car. The other targets, I had to sort of go and take the numbers from the draft regulations because I can't find published numbers from the final regulations. But what they indicate is that your SCZ or CLA, basically your downforce coefficient, the maximum for that is 5.2 and the minimum you can go on your drag coefficient is 1.0. These are pretty easy targets to hit with this style of car. It's quite a large car in terms of overall length. They're five meters long max length, two meters max width. So they're fairly large platform cars and it's pretty easy to hit those sort of numbers. There's of course another aerodynamic constraint as well, which is you're only allowed one aero device that you can adjust to achieve balance. You can't adjust both a front wing and a rear wing, for example. You have to just pick one element. So whether that's the rear spoiler, adjusting the angle on that, whether that's a rear wing, adjusting the angle on that, or whether that's something like the front splitter or front wing that you adjust the angle on to get your balance. These are the only elements you can use to rebalance your car, and this introduces a little bit of additional complexity, which is normally if I was to change my car's performance level from track to track, say I was moving from a low drag track to a high drag track, Typically speaking, what I would do is crank the arrow at the front and the rear. That gets me a higher drag level, a higher downforce level, but I keep balance. However, if you're only allowed to adjust one particular element on the car, say it's the rear wing, well then you have to adjust your balance and your drag concurrently, which is a bit annoying. Same as if it was a front wing. You would have to adjust just your balance and you could never really change your drag level. So again, that changes the game a little bit because your conventional strategy of having adjustable rear wing and adjustable front wing isn't going to be as advantageous as it would be otherwise. So you can get away without having that same level of adjustment if say you were to go for just a front wing adjust or maybe there's a device in the center of the car to adjust. So that's the background on the rule set. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the aerodynamics of this car. Okay, so let's start at the front of the car and work our way back. So starting at the front, uh, we have a splitter with a step center profile. Now, some of this is constrained by the hypercar regulations where this center meter or so of the car there has to be 50 millimeter higher than the, the outboard portion. So naturally that has to be raised to, to clear the rules and this will also feed a lot more airflow through to the, the mid floor of the car. Although it's worth noting that we have this huge air intake up here. Now, a decent chunk of this air I imagine is also gonna get fed to the mid portion of the car. So the mid floor and all that sort of stuff. And there'll also be a decent amount that's going to work its way out these side areas. You can see there's some ducting going on here. You can see little holes there. I would hazard a guess that those are gonna drive some ducts that are gonna feed uh, the brake ducts and stuff like that. Although you could also draw air from this particular region and have the caked in just that particular airflow. 
Now, one of the things that we can start to point out at the front that is going to become more and more apparent as we work our way back is there are a lot of styling driven features. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the regulations aren't particularly challenging. So from that perspective, uh, styling can take a bit of precedence and you can have design teams which were present in the car's launch uh, come up with a lot of styling features for the car. You've got all these little almost vortex generator looking strakes in the front here, but it makes no sense aerodynamically for you to put them there because generally speaking, you want a nice clean flow at the air intake uh, to be ingested further downstream. So normally you would, you would clear this space out because those particular vortex generators are on the pressure side uh, of the system. So that, that's all a little bit strange and I hazard a guess is largely styling driven, which like I said before, is not going to be the end of the world because the regulations are limiting you. Looking higher up the car, you can see we have these big cutouts over the top of the wheels. Now these were, were regulated back in the LMP1 days, not so much these days, uh, but by cutting out this area here, you can help vent any high pressure air out from here. If you have too much pressure, you can vent that up and out. Uh, you can just generally clear the high pressure air from this region and that can help uh, with the downforce on the front at the expense of having a little bit of spill flow that will work its way down towards the rear of the car. Although it's worth noting that because we have no rear wing, the spill flow is far less of an issue. As we look a little bit further rearwards, you can again see some styling dominated things like even just the shape of the ducts. You've got some sharp corners on all the edges of these ducts. Now that's a styling dominated feature there. Uh, the way it's tapering is styling dominated. These little overhangs here don't look like they're being used particularly for any sort of flow control uh, that I could think of or see. Uh, so you can see we've got some very styling dominated features there. And I would hazard guess that most of the engineering work is going on with the underfloor section rather than what we're seeing above the car. Moving to a slightly different angle at the front, you can see that we've got some cooling intakes back here uh, to do the radius. So those are clearly top mount cooling intakes. We're drawing air in uh, off the top there. And then up here, we have some exhaust venting here. Now, I believe it is a regulation that the exhaust is vented high and not into the diffuser. But as with a lot of details, this looks like a very styling driven exhaust to exit where we have this, this fin and then this sort of boxy style. It's not the sort of thing that you would do from a pure aerodynamic standpoint. The center cab uh, is fairly narrow. It's teardrop shaped. That's pretty standard for what you do for good aerodynamic efficiency. That's been a, a mainstay of LMP style cars for a while now. And now moving back, you can start to get a, a bit of a view behind the rear wheels. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that this particular region here uh, is not a huge vent. They could have put a much larger vent here than they did. In addition to these vents over the top, what I want you to notice is that there's clearly a decent chunk of area that's venting out the bottom down there. Uh, and we also have this section here, which has two clear veins there and there that are outwashing behind the tire. Uh, and then we have a little lip here that kicks up. Now the purpose of all this area is to extract a, a bit of load as you can get a bit of outwash from, from there that's naturally being driven sideways. And then also what we can do is wrap up a bit of the lower tire wake and kick that out to the side. So that will help with getting clean flow to the rear. And really without the rear wing, this car has to really focus on generating downforce in the center of the car, maximizing clean flow to the diffuser so that it maximizes the diffuser function therefore improving overall car downforce. Underneath the car, there could potentially be cooling inlets here. It does look like the cooling inlets up top are sufficient to, to feed the amount of cooling you'd require, but there may potentially be cooling inlets there. I wouldn't bet either way on that. The mirror sits here, which isn't a bad spot for it. It's in the wake of the wheel. So long as the driver actually has visibility, it does look like it might be a little bit tight, but if the driver's got good visit there, that's a good place as any to put the, the mirror because it'll have minimal aerodynamic impact. And you'll again see from here that we've got the, the presumably engine intake in the center, and then we've got radiator intakes at the side as mentioned, and it's all gonna come out this vent between the top deck and the diffuser at the rear. You'll also notice that there's a, a center shark fin, an angled one, and then two smaller fins. It is a requirement of the regulations that the cars have a certain amount of your stability, so they have to demonstrate that the, the car does have good stability and having these vertical fins does help with providing essential side force when the car starts to build up a lot of yaw. So that will help with that particular feature. You'll then see at the back that what we've had is we've had a fairly clean flow line from the front all the way to the back here. And that goes and has a nice little kick up on the rear deck. Now this kick is in quite close proximity to the diffuser. So diffuser, rear deck lead kick up, and that's going to give us a, a decent chunk 
uh, of interaction between the two and good extraction and overall downforce from the diffuser. The diffuser at the back is not actually crazy high in volume. It has a, a single strake on either side with a rear notch that's probably driven more by styling than anything else. Same with this outer notch here. But we've got uh, some form of strake division. We are going to segment off any sort of tire squirt and wake a little bit with this particular strake. And with sufficient wind tunnel optimization, we would expect to see a good overall car performance through suction through the underbody. So we talked about the airflows around the car, but how do you generate a nice, even balanced downforce without a rear wing? Because obviously you need your, your rear downforce to match your rear weight bias and your front downforce to match your front weight bias. So how do we get balanced downforce for this car? Now for this video, what I wanted to do was try something a little bit different to my normal analysis videos. I was quite curious about the actual aero targets and where you, you could feasibly get to in terms of aero balance and overall downforce and drag without a rear wing. So what I did was I actually catted up a car to the hypercar regulations with no rear wing and taking a few different styling cues from the Peugeot. So let me walk you through this overall car design. Now I'm planning on doing another video that will do a little bit more in depth the, the CAD process behind this car, but for now I'm just gonna overview the final shape. So I basically followed the, the 9X8 styling cues in terms of the, the front lights. So I'm trying to run a very similar style of front lighting to them and a very similar style uh, of bonnet. I've put it all on a chassis that I would say is a, a fairly conservative uh, indication of what they would potentially have sitting on their car. And then I've made it so that I've had some form of suspension representation and made it so that I can't make my diffuser tunnels higher than my, my rear drive shaft so that I have a realistic interpretation of where the rear suspension lies. At the front, uh, I've got a, a front splitter with two little flaps on it, just to make sure that we've got a, a decent amount of suction at the front, but we're still feeding clean flow to the rear. I've kept Peugeot's little detail that I was talking about on the bit behind the tire. So I've kept their, their curl up with their little strakes because that can help with the lower tire wake. And then what I've done is I've made a side pod that only ingests air from the top of the car down through there into the side pod. I've made the, the angle into the side pod perhaps a little too aggressive, but with more effort, you could rearrange that into a different spot. I just want to get it out fairly quickly and then bring it backwards with some smooth bodywork to the rear with a little bit of a pull in of the, the rear wake section behind the rear wheel and then a bit of lateral expansion. At the back, I have a diffuser which definitely is taller than the Peugeot's, although it's worth noting that I don't trim my strakes as early, so it does look taller than it is, uh, in a sense. I've also mocked up a, basically a, a false F1 engine in the center of this, which obviously isn't exactly correct. I've tried to match their, their philosophy on the shark fins and the rear stabilizing fins, although I haven't bothered with the, their particular angled cut, but there shouldn't be much difference in performance as a result of that. And you can see I've got a little bit more kick on my top deck. So it slopes up a little bit more and is a bit higher, but you can see that my overall cooling outlet size is pretty much the same as the Peugeot's, and that's really the important part. If we look underneath, you'll see that what I've done is I've stopped my kick line for my diffuser really quite far forwards. Now, what I'm doing with this is I'm gonna really focus my suction peak right on this flat center of the floor. And the reason I wanna focus it here is if you have a look, it's pretty much bang in the center of my wheel. So if I can get all my suction here from the diffuser, uh, we're going to end up uh, with a, a good balance of suction and not just front suction, but also rear suction. And this is what's going to allow me to have my downforce without a rear wing. You also note that my overhang behind the rear tires is a bit longer than my overhang in front of the front tires. This will also help with the rear downforce bias. So let's have a look at how the CFD looks. Here's the CFD run of the car. Uh, you can see that we've got some high pressure regions around the, the top of the front splitter, the front windscreen, uh, and over the entire rear top deck. Uh, you, you'll notice as well that the, the front splitter or high pressure region is gonna be largely canceled by the bonnet, but there is a high pressure region on top of the bonnet, so that's giving us a little bit of downforce there. But when we go and have a look at the underside of the car, that's where the money is really at. What you'll see here is that we're getting that massive amount of suction on the front splitter that you would expect. And then what we've got is we've got the, the pressure in front of the, the curved area of the floor. So that's where our, our air is really sort of stagnating in front of the curved floor. And we have a look here, we've got just as I discussed, an area with a large amount of suction right in the center of the car. And if you look through the diffuser, you'll see that we've got a huge amount of suction spanning over a very large area of floor. And this is giving us 
downforce on both the front and the rear. And whilst you have a lot of suction on the front splitter here, it's offset by the pressure here, on the rear end, you only really have suction then sort of going back to, to ambient pressure right at the diffuser exit. So we're getting good suction here. And also on the top surface, we have a bit more pressure. So you can see we're getting that downforce at the rear end of the car. And this is how we're able to achieve balanced downforce distributions without needing a rear wing. So after just doing two extra iterations on my baseline design, uh, what I ended up with for this car easily exceeded the hypercar regulations. What I ended up with uh, was an SCZ total of, of 4.95, balanced 49% front, 51% rear, which is not far from the mark for an all-wheel drive style uh, LMP style car. You, you could easily get a weight distribution that would be around 48.52. Uh, so we're in the ballpark for aero balance, even without a wing. And I ended up with a CD of 1.07, giving me an efficiency of about 4.6 to 1. Now you can see that this car would be very illegal in its current configuration. Now, if we wanted to bring it back to work within the regulations, what I'd have to do is I'd have to, to back off a few things. I have to back off my front wing flaps a little bit. I, I'd have to back off my rear end, but then somehow make it a bit draggier because if I backed everything off, I would be below the 1.0 minimum drag target. So I wouldn't have enough drag. So I'd have to deliberately go out of my way to add drag to the car because it's making too much downforce. Or the other thing I could do is raise my ride height to knock off a bit of the downforce, but I'm not actually running the car super low to the ground. So to answer the question, yes, you can make a car without a rear wing that is well balanced, has good aero balance and good aero performance characteristics within the LMH regulations. Of course, if you were designing a car without these particular regulations, then of course you would slap a rear wing on it because you can get a little bit of extra downforce from there. You can get a bit more downforce at the front pretty easily to compensate. And then from that, we can go and have a car with more overall performance. But because the car is aero limited in terms of regulations, you can easily get away with no rear wing if that is your team's styling choice. Well, that's all for this video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below on what videos you'd like to see next and hopefully I'll see you next time.